telling you the agenda is to push that country toward Islamic agenda or destroy it completely. So to your question, I will tell you that Nigeria does not have a bright future for now. Hmm. It doesn't have a bright future for now. The elements that are in the north, and most of them are receiving grants. Some of them, even in university, they are getting grants from this Qatar and all the extreme Islamic groups are giving them money. And they are building, their power is increasing day by day in the political system. They are, because they are even creating billionaires mm. that eventually tomorrow they want to control Western part of Nigeria. The East a little bit stubborn for them. Eastern Nigeria is stubborn. That's why they are isolating them. Mm. The isolation of uh, so-called Igbo, 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 it's not because Igbo hate Nigeria. Igbos are the most Nigerian than any Nigerian. They are every part of Nigeria you find them. They have their own problem for sure, like every African group. But the issue, they are not the problem. But they are acting a little bit stubborn to the Islamic agenda. So mm. they have to be isolated. And to do that, you need the most, one of the most powerful group, which is the Yoruba group. If mm. you don't use Yoruba, you can't succeed. And the mm. Yoruba group is very educated. So what do you do? You look for the weak. The weak mm. one among them, which is the Islamized ones, and play on their religious sentiment. And then you destabilize the country. I can tell you, my friends, mm. you need a revolution. Elements, religious, uh, Islamic element in the Yoruba ethnic mm. group to use them to mm. destabilize that mighty uh, people who have built empires like Oyo and other places long before anything. But they are looking for some weak elements. Like Tunumbu is a weak element. People think he's powerful, but he's a weak element in the Yoruba war. These are the weak element they want to use to be able to uh, push the Islamic agenda. People have been telling you that Islamic agenda is a lie. No, it's true. I can tell you that I, I was born a Muslim. My people have been Muslim for seven, for since the seventh century. I'm a Madinga. And we have been Muslim. There is nobody in my ethnic group who is Christian. All my people have been Muslim. And I study Islam in Northern Nigeria. And I'm telling you the agenda is to push that country toward Islamic agenda or destroy it completely. So to your question, I will tell you that Nigeria does not have a bright future for now. Hmm. It doesn't have a bright future for now. The elements that are in the north, and most of them are receiving grants. Some of them, even in university, they are getting grants from this Qatar and all the extreme Islamic groups are giving them money. And they are building, their power is increasing day by day in the political system. They are, because they are even creating billionaires. Mm. that eventually tomorrow they want to control Western part of Nigeria. The East is a little bit stubborn for them. Mm. Eastern Nigeria is stubborn. That's why they are isolating them. Mm. The isolation of uh, so-called Igbo, 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 it's not because Igbo hate Nigeria. Igbos are the most Nigerian than any Nigerian. They are every part of Nigeria you find them. They have their own problem, for sure, like every African group. But the issue, they are not the problem but they are acting a little bit stubborn to the Islamic agenda. So mm. they have to be isolated. And to do that, you need the most, one of the most powerful groups, which is the Yoruba group. Well, for those that say that Nigeria is not going to be Islamized, I wish you the best of luck. Good afternoon and welcome to our lecture. It's going to be just an hour because I'm very, very busy. Uh, even doing this is just to... Uh, just clear the air on the reason more why we need your bad nation. Um, I'm not going to respond to any more of what I've said yesterday. I've moved on. Uh, if you haven't listened to my program yesterday, you should go and listen to that. You will learn one or two things. But for now, it's all about your bad nation again. We have 10 minutes before we start. This video I'm going to play is just going to be audio. You will be able to listen to it. This is happening in somewhere in Kano State. This is not last year. This is happening this year as more Boko Haram Fulani terrorists are recruited into the Nigerian army. Let's listen to this. Popularly known as Endaba in Kano State are here to embrace the amnesty initiative introduced by the Nigeria Police Force in the state. About three months ago, the Kano State Police Command invited some identified individuals believed to be behind the escalation of toggery and other heinous crimes in the state for dialogue. The meeting 
yielded a positive response as some of the talks embraced the initiative. Among the 222 repentant talks, 50 of them drawn from Dala, Fege, Ungugu, Kano Municipal, and Gwale local government area of the state having completed a two-month intake training as members of the Nigerian Police Special Constabulary were decorated. They pledge to promote peace in the state and promise not to go back into Togri. I am among the 50 people who were trained and absorbed into the Nigerian police force and I am prepared to play my part to ensure that Kano is peaceful. We will go around the states and continue to preach peace to the people so as to keep the state safe. While welcoming the repentant talks into the society, the Commissioner of Police, CP Mohamed Gume, debunked reports making round that the police is recruiting talks as its personnel. He says the amnesty initiative is only aimed at sustaining peace in the state. As of today, the police command has received a total of 222 influential youth and are committed to crime prevention duties with the police to push out violent criminals among them, notorious thugs, popularly known as Endeavor, who over the years engaged in supremacy conflict, but Endeavor, as we call it. The governor of the state, Abba Yusuf, who gave a rousy welcome to the repentant thugs, urge them to be good ambassadors of the state. From the day they surrendered, they have been subjected to a series of reformatory process. They have undergone lectures from psychologists and other experts in human behaviorism. And by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to give them all the necessary popularly known
To the program. Mukibugwa say good afternoon. I will not have the time to key you lay your concon. So I say good afternoon to all and those that are going to watch it later. Let's go with this. I'm coming back. Lose blood dancing at the visit of only 15 1 2024. Mokia is the meeting of blood dancing session at the intimacy and the valley. You need to set off so excellent more by excellent more. I need to tell my law 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 by so what you will be an excellent book of your back at the IU Moki, not only Lubini. Uh, <laughs> Ko ikisi ni spoke ma mi doctor la me wa no di oroso gbo ta jo wa yi so mi o change e o ni spoke ma oro tin ba ti so fun la mi tin ba mo di so fun ko ba mi so jade ko ba mi ko jade so ko ikisi ni spoke ma mi o today is 15 1 2024 mi o change ko ikio ejo e na ko lo ko en soro lori pe igbo ti be awon agbagba ti oro yo ba ko fe ye mi mo ti ma soro any moon who are Galaga, only Jacari or Banisaga. What is one you want, what you want, a tiny moon, you want, you want, okay, kill you, Vavaki, see, who you mean, eh, you to joke, you see, and I'm a do, but the amateur keep here, you can see, I mean, Okwadogan, Umbermutra, you know, DSS. Okuraba <laughs> So, <laughs> Simple, <laughs> But tell me about your daddy, the Jerumi. I don't say Loko, you are la. Says the last time, you want to come up, Paravaje, and take a force work on me. And take a job with our Laruge, eh? And take a job so good. Look what one of our Lajo Mope, Okina. Then be over more, tell me more. You know, can't see 
Because more time, at any program wa o mama wa ni osan o de le mawa for now i will not be on the star radio because i'm doing a lot of other things so there's probability pe e yin te ban ro pe e ma ri mi ni ori star radio you might not see me for some time because i'm so busy presently so but we will still be on the star radio but for now the 11 o'clock i will not be on there at the moment until we have enough that we can say it's enough uh TMF is support to her. Uh, if otherwise, uh, we will have to continue to adjust a lot of things. Um, I'm going to go straight into it. On the of the I've already shared that and I'm going to. Um, I think I should be able to pick it from here. Uh, I've already posted that to different platform. And I hope that Opolok Bonyi Tiri and to buy Tiri, hopefully because we are going to do any leche Tiri. I'm trying to see if I can send it. Kilo de tofeshi, you may not be properly view it from here. Mm. All right, I might have to send it as an email to myself so that my lady can't. I'm struggling. Fancy. Well, I do. I wish there's other way, but there's none. Once I run the arrival, a four one, I did two hundred. I did not ever come back. I'm a great one. I love a combat. 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 Why we Yoruba must exit Nigeria? Opolopo Yaman Biri Kini Iditi Ashefekba Yoruba Nation. Modupe Lowo Professor Adebanji Akitoye, the Alano and the Oracle of our time. He has actually sent something to all the Yoruba sons and daughters, and I'm going to spend time. I hope I can read it out before four o'clock because I know a call is going to come through before four, and I'm going to push as much. Like I said, I will not be able to mention names of every single one, but Mukiba Bakito, Mukiba leader as well. Why we Yoruba must exit Nigeria? Nigeria poses a mortal threat to the very existence of the Yoruba nation. It is imperative to remove this entrenched essential threat promptly in order to avoid becoming a catastrophic example of a derelict civilization of careless people who act too late. The infamous amalgamation of the Northern and the Southern Protectorate to create Nigeria in 1914 entail an indiscriminate lumping together of ethnic groups with disparate cultures, dissonant values, clashing world views. With Nigerian people operating in deep suspicions and fears of one another, 
and with the British colonial officials encouraging the growth of the mutual suspicions and fear. Nigeria grew into a scene of permanent struggle for domination of the totality of Nigerian social, political, and economic space. This was resulted in a state of anarchy, which expresses itself on ending conflict and among on ending conflict and wars among the various people trapped in pretending nation state of Nigeria. The British choose in the last years before independence to elevate to the position of dominance over Nigeria, the Fulani, a small minority people, the least educated people in Nigeria, and the least inclined to accept or pursue modern education and development. Holding the control of the federal government at independence, the Fulani concluded that they were meant to be the new colonial overlords of Nigeria. And the way forward for them was to use federal power to subdue the other peoples of Nigeria and thereby establish themselves in a permanent dominance over Nigeria. In the process, a political culture of impunity, crooked manipulation of processes, blunt corruption and decline of morality took over the life of Nigeria. The historical cultural ascendancies of the Yoruba nation in the Black Africa. The modern Yoruba trajectory towards social, political, social economic development and modernization have been effectively blocked. Nigeria has deliberately constituted a firm and devastating impediment and a determined drag to the vibrant progress in the modernization that the Yoruba nation has started to accomplish in the decade before the Nigerian independence in 1950s, in democratic politics, in education, science, and technology. Before the advent of the European colonial rule, the Yoruba had been far ahead of the rest of the Black Africa in modernization. Urban civilization, political civilization, economic prosperity, long-distance commerce, and artistic culture. And the Yoruba had built the largest empire in the history of West Africa. But since their inclusion in the ill-motivated British political contrivance called Nigeria, the Yoruba have been declining devastatingly. Today, the decline of the Yoruba nation in Nigeria across all realms of human endeavor has reached a fruitful nadir and the Yoruba must act urgently to separate their nation from the shit old country you all call Nigeria. Because the Yoruba people place great importance on education, the destruction of the quality of education under the Fulani influence in Nigeria has been a major disaster to the Yoruba people. Moreover, the general decline of Nigerian economy and the growth of deep uncertainty for businesses have resulted in Yoruba land in the flight of investment to other countries and shutting down of industries that have been established by the Yoruba before Nigeria. Independent. In circumstances, unemployment has been racking the lives of educated Yoruba youth for decades, forcing thousands of youth forcing thousands of Yoruba youth to hurry to flee abroad annually, and even forcing many to attempt to reach Europe by fleeing across the arid Sahara Desert and the Mediterranean Sea, a venture that regularly takes the lives of hundreds of youth. Yoruba land is being robbed of its young educated professionals. 
And the effect of the Yoruba nation in Nigeria is terrible. For many of the educated Yoruba youth who remain at home, the prospect are grim in the years of unemployment, wretched poverty, inability to settle down to marry and begin to raise families of their own. Hopelessness and shame. Many of these who, for any reason, not being able to flee abroad, are unhappily going into crime, drug abuse, criminal court, internet crime, and prostitution. Many of the ones with lesser education are fleeing as refuge to the neighboring countries like Benin Republic, Togo Republic, where there are sanctioned sections of the Yoruba nation where employment is easier to find where some small businesses is easier to create and grow, where life is certainly more secure than in the bastard Olori Burukuto Nidafu Nigeria country, where one can live in a safe and satisfying life among the Yoruba kit and kin. The stark truth about today is that the Yoruba nation in Nigeria is breaking up and it will break. It doesn't matter how long it takes we will break the last British empire called Nigeria, either by peace or by war. Even more devastating to the fortunes of the Yoruba nation in Nigeria has been since 2015, the full and in threat to physical existence of the Yoruba people through murderous assault on the Yoruba population across the Yoruba land these unremitted and ferocious attacks have decimated Yoruba rural life and essentially destroyed the agricultural economy of the Yoruba nation. The savage invasion that heavily armed Fulani men, headsmen, and militias have been brought upon Yoruba land have destroyed the peace and the tranquility in the entirety of the Yoruba land today. The authorities of the Western world, especially Britain and the United States, have kept telling the world that the Fulani killings and destructions in Nigeria are a result of climate change. That is what America and British is telling us, that they are fighting because it's a climate change. The, consequences, the consequence is now becoming deterioration of grassland in the Western African Sahel. The consequence of varying of Fulani cattle others 12 southward. This assertion is a deliberately false representation of the situation. A ploy by the Western world authorities to cover and justify their continued support of the Fulani in their fears of Nigeria, even in the spite of Nigeria's mysterious record under the Fulani dominance. This unrently falsehood is a crime against humanity. It is true that drought in the Sahel in the 80s and 90s did not bring hardship upon cattle herders, made some cattle herders veer towards southward in West Africa sub region, generally in search of grass for their cattle. But what has happened in Nigeria has not happened in other countries of West Africa. It's a deliberate agenda of the Nigerian Fulani political elite to seize upon the distress of the cattle herders, turn them by indoctrination into a Fulani army of conquest over the Nigeria. We saw that in Lagos some few weeks ago. Many people have forgotten. The indigenous people claiming to be Lagosians in that fake certificate presented. Equip them with sophisticated modern weapons while the Yorubas are told to return their weapons to the federal government. They've now literally overpowered every single one of us. Listen to the news in the last couple of days. Abuja is no longer safe. As I speak to you right now, Wiki 
is calling an emergency meeting about what is going on in FCT. That is Abuja. I pity a lot of your people that are defending these Fulani marauders that are killing us. What I'm reading is coming straight from Professor Banja Kitoye from Benin Republic. Equip them with sophisticated modern weapons, with RPG. Two days ago, precisely, if I'm right, the military barracks in Castina was overrun by the Boko Haram Fulani terrorists. Many Nigerians think that we are joking when they say that they will come and kill us if we do not stop them now. Your governors will not be able to save you. The late Malafia Obadia told us when they finish in the rural areas, they will come into the urban areas. We are now raising money for the Fulani terrorists on social media. We can now see them wading their lifestyle on the TikTok in 21st century. They are now unleashing them sophisticated weapons and unleash them on the non-Fulani peoples of Nigeria. The objective of all these is far-reaching. It is meant to give the Fulani nation, a nation that has never posed a homeland, they were never part of what used to be the Yoruba Empire and the other empires. Fulani was never part of us. They are now your governors in the northern part of Nigeria. And you all think it's a joke. You all think that we don't have a job. We spend hours and time trying to tell you the invasion is getting closer. You will be killed if you don't prepare your mind to kill them before you are killed. That is the motto of the Israel. And that is why Israel has been attacking Palestine with over 25,000 people that have died. Prayer is not going to solve the situation. We must all rise up just like Tiwa Danjuma told us. Many of you don't want to rise up. You will be a victim if you don't. The objective of all these is far-reaching. It is meant to give the Fulani nation. These Fulani doesn't have a country of their own. They are now planning to take over our own territorial place called the Yoruba land that was given to us by our great, 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 great forefathers. And some of you say it's never going to happen. But right in front of us, we can feel it. We can see it. We can touch it. In December, a Yoruba musician was kidnapped and rode from Kogi to Abuja. He paid for his life and his team, 90 million. I am asking for just less than certain amount of money on the social media so that we can be able to become a very powerful media to fight these monstrous that is killing us and challenge the status quo from the federal to the world. None of you are taking us serious. But when you are kidnapped, you will look for money to give them. I was listening to China's television just about a few minutes ago. The young man says, maybe it is high time that everybody has a weapon to defend themselves. Bolatinobo will not be able to defend you, neither none of your governors. The invasion will happen. How soon, I don't know, but for every day, they are becoming extremely very powerful. We are now paying terrorists so that we can save our life and they are armed to the tit. And you think the CNN, the Al Jazeera, and the BBC and the Sky News care less about your lives back in Nigeria. You need a media that can challenge the status quo. And this is the media that can do that job very well. Let's continue. The objective of all these is far-reaching. It is meant to give the Fulani a nation that have never posed a homeland. A homeland now comprising the whole of Nigeria. That is why the former president, Muhammadu Buhari, a bastard, dead or alive, a foremost Fulani leader, remember, he came to Ibadan to challenge the sitting governor because his clan were being attacked. A Fulani leader doggedly supported and assisted 
the agenda of Fulani conquest of Nigeria throughout his eight years. Buhari literally gave them more access and power. And when Chief Sunday Buhu wanted to stop them, they went for him on the 1st of July 2021 to assassinate him because it was a stumbling block for them. And some of you think you can now bring Igbo down while we are still alive. We will deal with every single one of you from every one of those medias that are in support of the right to the quest of the Yoruba people. We will protect Igbo just as Biden is being protected by the American secret services and the media. We will protect Igbo just as Rishi Suna is being protected day in, day out in this country. We will give him all the accolades that we need to give him on a daily basis. And like I said yesterday, without repeating my words, go and listen to my program yesterday. If you don't feel comfortable with him, I repeat again, die more than today, don't wait till tomorrow. For eight years of Purari's presidency, while he tried repeatedly to use the federal power to seize land, we all saw that the Uruga, the water land, all these to seize for the to seize land for the Fulani along the waterways and other places all over Nigeria. Why he has announced that anybody in Africa could come to Nigeria without a travel document. But we saw Professor Moyo, an American citizen carrying a Nigerian passport, was almost killed in his own father's land. But the Fulanese were allowed to come in without no documents. Try to travel between the borders and see how difficult it could be, how challenging it could be. You could lose your life within a split of seconds if you continue to look into the eyes of those bastard military Fulani terrorists that they've kept in the borders. I have witnessed it before. I know what I'm talking about. A lot of you have witnessed it. Igwewo himself witnessed it one time on his route back to, I to Ibadan, traveling through that junction. Professor Moyo would have been a dead man if he was not smart enough to give them what they want. Many of you think, oh, this is a joke. A 13 year old was killed again. Just as we we're talking about Nabila. I don't know Nabila. She's from the northern part of Nigeria, but I am concerned for her, just as I'm concerned for many of you idiots. Bomb bastards. You want us to sit back so that they can overrun us? Is that what you want? You think we are joking. You think this is all because of monetary or because we want to be famous. Idiot all over the place. My family have been famous before social media. You can ask Ebenezer Obey. He's still alive. So that you can know about my dad. Bomb bastards. You think social media kept me famous when my dad was still spending money in and out of this country without using the politician money. Today, the politicians, you can see Atiku in Dubai, that's where he lives. Continue to say, nothing is going to happen in Jesus' name, but it's going to happen. And we're all going to witness it. But we can stop it with everything we have. So this is again, a brilliant write-up that I've not finished reading, coming from a leader that some of you have tried to castigate bastards all over the place, especially these bastard Yoruba people. Babaki Tony is a thief. Olini is working for politicians. Bastard all over the place. He continued to do a write-up at this age of 88 years old, highlighting the dangers so that somebody like us can read it out to you in a simple English. Bastard all over the place. Buhari opened Nigeria for the Fulanese. He actually announced it in one of his trip that they can come in without any document. While he tried repeatedly to use the federal power to seize land for the Fulani along the waterways and other places all over Nigeria. 
why he announced that anybody in Africa could come to Nigeria without a travel document. A coded invitation to Fulani people over the West and Central Africa with the porous border that we have in the first place. And why he knew all northern Nigerian border gates open for unrestrained access for the incoming Fulani holders, while he ensured that the Nigerian security officials would not arrest Fulani in the act of killing and destroying. Maybe some of you should go back and ask what happened at the Kuje prison. Till date, nobody has given an account of how many of the terrorists left that prison. Abolongo prison was also invaded by Wakilo. Today, nobody knows where he is. Since the Fulani were made phenomenally confident in Buhari's years, they are simply continuing with their killing, raping, destruction, kidnapping, now under President, or now under President Buhari's successor, President Bola Ahmed Tinobu, and some of you get hype up quickly because of Igbo's message, idiot, all over the place. Across Nigeria and in the Yoruba homeland, we've seen more of the Fulani terrorists that have come back. They were very quiet during Buhari's years. We can now see more kidnapping. The youth coppers have spent 149 days in the captivity of this Boko Haram Fulani terrorist. But the Nigerian media continue to use the word kidnappers and bandits. The persistent assertion by the West that all the Fulani killings and destructions in Nigeria are a result of climate change is a cover-up for the Western powers. Continued support of the Fulani in the affairs of Nigeria. Even in spite of Nigeria's distrustful record under the Fulani dominance that was foisted on by the Nigeria by British. There are no official estimate of the numbers of Yoruba people or other peoples that have been killed by the Fulani Maredwas because the government is not interested in giving us how many people have died in the eight years of Buhari's government by the Fulani terrorists, the ISIS, the ISWAP, and all other element criminals parading themselves in that contraction you call country called Nigeria. My name is Olami Koike, 16th January 2024, London, 15.35 p.m. As Nigeria public space is mired in criminality, sleaze immorality, the exposure of the Yoruba to the toxicity has bred a small clique of powerful Yoruba high-level scavengers who are motivated by personal greed to align with their authors of the most subdued culture of public corruption on earth, of the most frightening system of impunity, insensitive governance, the enemies and the traducers of the ethnic values of the Yoruba nation. The Yoruba nation is thus at a critical junction in this, the beginning of the year 2024. For the Yoruba nation today, the options are either to stay in Nigeria and sink into the utter barbarism, just like we saw the Titanic sank. Billionaires paid $250,000 just to go underneath the ocean of Titanic. They never came out. No one will ever bring Titanic out from the deep of the ocean. You will never. It doesn't matter how many fasting your church or your mosque or your traditional try to tell you about Nigeria. Nigeria has sunk. And it will never rise in Jesus' name, inshallah. Lashe Dumari. When it will in Nigeria, it will rise. Eh, this show is the most of me. What my mama mama in June. Say a 13 years old was killed just to send a message to the parent that we are not joking. We need the money. A 13 years old was killed just less than a couple of days. Two family are crying as they lost two children in the hands of the captivity. And your church tells you Nigeria is going to be better. Koni dafu pastor enye. Koni shoriri. Koni dafu imam enye. Koni dafu babala wo no. To bashin so kweka magba drafu Nigeria. Oni shoriri ni muso. Nobody pray for Nigeria. We pray for the destruction of Nigeria to come down so that the lives of innocent people can be much better. Idiot all over the place. Eni shoriri. 
scum bastard all over the place. Cover up with religion for so long, we would destroy Nigeria from outside. As is a man, 2024. Nigeria is crumbling. Edifice. And has been described by the external observer that have also made use of Nigeria. Shell just pull out of Nigeria. Idiot all over the place. Go and see. Shell destroyed the Niger Delta area. Nobody can fish anymore. They have now pulled out of Nigeria. I will buruku. Shell pull out of Nigeria after they destroy the river run. That was what Ken Sarawiwa was fighting for until he was killed by the late bastard Abacha. Abacha's wife is still alive. His children are still alive. His grandchildren are still alive. But Bumama Shokuni, the way Ken Sarawiwa was armed and killed in 1995, if I'm right with the date. Idiot all over the place. The same shell is now pulling out. Amnesty International is now warning shell to make sure that they do all the cleanup in that area before they leave. Some of you don't even understand the consequence of what we're going through. Bombastard all over the place. Nigeria is crumbling edifice and has been described by the external observer as a dilapidated falling house. We've seen so many dilapidated houses in Lagos. Sometimes you see, hey, it collapsed, oh, he let it collapse. Oh. It's because that house has been dilapidated and there was nobody to make sure that they can build a foundation and start afresh. You want to build on a false foundation. That is never going to work. Nigeria is the false foundation created by the British in 1914. We will crumble it and we will start afresh again. It is never too late to start afresh. It's a falling house or more recently as a collapsed structure. You want to build on something that doesn't have a foundation. What is the basis of Nigeria? Who are Nigerians? The British created Nigeria for their own selfish interest, for business venture. Idiot all over the place. That's why most of you will never get a visa to come to this country. And when you get a visa, you're coming to become a second slave, just like we have lived here for 25 years. 15 years, I was fighting the British government just to get a document that can allow me to walk and also travel back to the shit old country they created for us. Idiot all over the place. Praying for Nigeria. You think the British children pray every day before they have three square meal? They don't have to pray. All of these descriptions are consistent with the stoop into which Nigeria has fallen in recent decades. Experts acknowledge that the colonial experiment, Nigeria was an experiment for the British. 100 years, it has already expired. The bastard politicians are now manipulating everything and telling us every four years, you should go and cast your vote with a fake PVC that Bola Tinobu will rig the election and he will rig the next one because that is what they're good at. Where's Katrina Lang, the former British High Commissioner that told you to go and get your PVC? Idiot. She has moved on again to another country to destroy she never had a good record from what we heard. Every country she traveled to represent the British always come back as chaos. You're expecting on your people to tell you what I'm telling you. You think they care about us. Shell is pulling out of Nigeria. Go and read it in People's Gazette. After they destroyed the river Rhine. She didn't destroy America yet. We thought in Wepo. And we are here shouting every day. You think, I just finished eating Eba as a Jebu man. My wife is going to work. She started in the afternoon. My children have gone to school. Bastard. You cannot even take care of yourself not to take care of your children. Because inflation. What are we going to do? You will support the movement. And we will push until we push them to the wall. Just like Obasan just says, we are not violent people, but we will push them. We will come out when we are told to come out. Not say, we are not coming out because we don't have transport fare. I won't lose I've told you about some workers that trekked all the way from Manchester or somewhere around there to London to protest for inconveniences. 
Some of you think that the diaspora will be funding when you are not ready. Face over the cash up. Idiot all over the place. We will all stop the nonsense political, we will not sense it. I'm all like politics and beggary politics, don't she? Tan won lo she fire or she book bang governance and lori book on the show it. I'm a dasi the sibu on lara to bad this stage. Oh my salo. Why ye ponti titi ti wak by nito mapa? I wa to kuma li won. I le won wok be. I le won wok be. Nigba tasi koba to. Wa wa sare kaba kaba kobo kobo. It could be another two years or three years. We will prepare for that. Talk about it by diplomacy. They cannot keep us in this situation while you are suffering and we are suffering as well in this shit old world that we are living. The wicked world. 25,000 innocent people have died in Palestine. You think, you think the United Nations cares about anybody? They can't stop the war. Sudan, Ukraine, Nibaya. Nigeria affair to sumo. Toba bida, tipi afra babere, can you cost cop, a quilema balonomy, Mudisophony, or doing a mamma be with dear dear. And I hope my mom will understand. A bani musha jeton, Monini lati so beti mufije, musha je batoni. She will not rebaje. Carilla son a limo, to buy a inje, what is so going to do she. What is so in the naked? What is ba ashokuru la rain? What is fancy nu wo wo? Awa ni kabura wa la sho. Enyo mali wa point the finger sa wa ta wa la broke ni dafuni eni shuriri. Pon bastard. She nakedness de miwa. Eni ta wa nakedness. Eh be eh be be ayeto da. Kwa sho kwa ti kwa buboni. Awo mo le lo hospital. Wa le lo school. Awo mo do ane sin another fifteen minutes. I'm a I'm a school. I'm a big school. I'm a school. I'm a big school. I'm a big school. That is what we are asking for. You think all your influencer cares about what I'm talking about? I'm all lushy. I've become a wabi. You're a banish on this. Toti 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 fishy mistake. You're like my post sorry sorry. Insta blog or lori buruku ati linda ikeja. I'm all lushy lori buruku. Linda ikeja all lushy. Don't be any suru lori. Che bondo ko bondo ko politician lo una filo wola wo. Bon bastard. You want to have a of she in that KG or Lushi. And why just love a coma be your banishment? Everyone when you care me. Idiot all over the place. Nigeria crumbling edifice has been described by the external observer as a dilapidated falling house. Or more recently as a collapsed structure. All of these descriptions are consistent with the stoop into which Nigeria has fallen in recent decades. Experts acknowledge that the colonial experiment and fabrication in Africa have an unsavory consequence for Africans. I am in Nigeria. Nigeria has respect in it. South African embassy, so for visa, visa, lost it. My mother fell off fraud in it. My mother fell off drug. Lost it Kenya. Take your passport to even Bene Republic. Come full and top offices, top offices, no, no, top, 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 Nigeria had the case study. Lojo Waju, Bashin saw the Soviet Union for break. It got to break it like Timo. Odume Tadume and any Oma break. Odume Fani, Anani, a little my breaking. Break up of Nigeria to bury. Nigga Tawa to Fiarasi, not three years ago. Elwa, my yes, a Kurumbe. When it daffo ye. Our man tap on Sibemi. Any Maku Maku, any Maye Maye. I won't look sure to do the Brooklyn and Domaku, but I'm on. Awon ika. Mwen wa dele ke lori pitch. E je ki wa fi. Ki lo fi. Ki lo fi small pack. Tu wa le gbe le mi. Ki fi mwen yi. Ke wu ke wu bi pack. I shin don. Be lo grass. On you know, you launch the stadium. Kon da football lori ye. E wu grass. Awon li. E je ngbe lo si pack. Just ordinary pack. Ki ma ti wa lo si. Awon akademi. Awon akademi. Tot in train awon mo. Ko wu. Ko wu stadium. Bo shen don yon 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 yon. Idiot all over the place. 
bi ku ka kiri bi were ma jojo eleye ya ato ba ma je ka kiri ma lo pati oba to e ku wa ninu le ko ma ma ba ninu le oba ti wa ka kiri awon ba won ka kiri awon ba le yoruba e wa ni ko fun yin lowo nita ani wa lo mo yoruba mo alade ade o we respect the stool probably not even the person there The sad package, it's a lot too fast. Expert of that in the Nigerian case, the negative character of African post colonial state is the signpost in the prevailing high level of public corruption, poor leadership, and a near anarchy. And these have dragged the Nigerian state into the outright failure. The relentless decline towards this point of failure. Has generated immense human mystery. Wa ma re lo mi ba wa ma sukun ni peru ya o lele. Che o lo ndawa kwe kaji yani. Che o fi po lo ndawa kwe kaji yani. Yes. To ba te ndawa kaji ya. Che koti to ka. Be iya yeti to. Koti to yin. The sad package of the human suffering that is called Nigeria. Lo shi lo lo li bruku. Mo ali no Meeting company, Baba Kito, well, our cake recon last week. Baba, I know what if my book can compare anything for Lulu Shin Nigeria. Only stop comparing anything with Nigeria. Nigerian Shin got Alema compare anything for Lu. You might have to do so. No, no, don't stop comparing it. Hey, Mama, compare. You know, it's a country. Because a country will, will work for the people and the people will enjoy it. Say, ah, you can take a look if you're working. Oh, Mommy, show video con Lake Kitty. Money for 20 years, was she titty? Human suffering, dilapidated country. And they stop, stop cursing Nigeria from my broken. It doesn't buy anymore. So, oh my lady, kill you. You want more Nigerian? In two years, we cook a cook a cook. We go back. We want to go. We want to go. We said, "Oh my lugad, show a daily lugad. He be me daily lugad. But be daily lugad. So my talk be lugad. So my cook. Yeah, what? Get friend. Oh my cook. Oh my cook. Marry. Oh my cook. Be my friend. I'm gone. Because of my time, and I still have few more to read. We will not probably be able to read everything. I wanted to do this. I'm still going to do it record on its own. But I'm just doing this with analysis. And I'm going to pull it down right now. Part 2, Makbadawa, Bialale. Because I don't want to be called when my house my clothes will be broadcast. So, where, where am I? Part 2, Makbadawa, Bialale. Just leave it like this. So let's leave it like this. If it's a cade, my brother was she part two later. Could it daff me? Moki will be in Lulu Fever. Or Lamiko Kinimunje, Koiki Media. Have a very good afternoon and bye for now.